All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. So we're going to have a little bit of a change of pace. Let me get out of the light there so you're not blinded by the outside. Okay, so Bob is sitting over here patiently awaiting his turn. Uh, it's gonna be a week or so before we get to him over at Chris's place. The truck is just, well, it's the truck. It's just sitting there right now. Um, so we're gonna do some different kind of projects today. So. Some of you guys, the OGs, may remember that um, you know I have some machines, some milling machines, some lathes, um, and stuff like that. So I'm going to take you to the machine shop part of the garage, and we're here. Okay, so what you are looking at, and hopefully you can't hear that chainsaw in the background, it's really loud, time out. Okay, so the guys across the street are cutting the rebar for the forms of the driveway of the new house, so it's kind of noisy here and there. So anyways, uh, what I was saying is, is that, you know, we have some machine equipment here, and for the OGs, you may remember that I do machine work um, on all kinds of stuff, all kinds of different projects. And then, let's see, back here in the back is the other lathe. So um, a little bit of background for those of you who don't know, I'm a machinist now, and I've been a machinist for the better part of 20 something years, um, whatever. Anyways, so I like to make stuff. Um, and if somebody says it's not gonna work, I try really hard to make it work. That's all I need to hear is that's not gonna work and I'm gonna find a way to do it. Now, it may take me 27 times longer to make it work, whatever it is, but nonetheless, I get to make something. So in this case, there is um, a little project that I've been working on forever. I've had this, this lathe behind me, this green lathe. I've had it for a long time. Um, and it's been one of those perpetual projects that never seems to get finished, so I'm going to try to finish it this winter, I hope. Um, and what I mean by finish it is going to be a CNC lathe, uh, a manual converted CNC lathe. Um, so I may lose some of you guys on this project. You know, this may be a little bit out of your area of interest, but um, it's something that I like to do and it's really, um, it's kind of like putting a car together. You know, you, you do all this work and you don't, get to see the fruits of your labor until the project is done and I've done a lot of work in this thing and you can't even tell. So the electronics are done more or less but the mechanical aspect is not. So what we're going to work on today, the cross slide and I've already drawn up and 3D printed this part for proof of concept and I did a little video on it a while back and I just I haven't got back to it but now we're going to. So this part is the 3D printed proof of concept and it mounts over here and this is the cross slide for the lathe. So what we're going to do is duplicate this part because we know it's a good part now and this is the material we're going to use. This is two and a half or three inch uh, aluminum bar stock and we're going to do the machine work on it to hopefully make a good part out of it. As you can see, the cold saw makes quick work of that. Um, that's really not even the right blade. I keep WD-40 on it um, because it keeps the chips from um, welding together and sticking to the blade and just making it a rather unpleasant experience. So now it's time to get started roughing this piece out. Something else pretty cool, if you're ever considering one of these cold saws for your projects at home, um, check the finish out on this cut. That is, I wouldn't say a, a machine finish, but it is definitely a good square edge. Um, one thing to note though, if you are considering a cold saw, they are probably not really good on tubing type materials unless they're thick. Um, the blades just don't like that interrupted cut and they don't 
last very long. Even if you buy the purpose built blade for whatever you're cutting, like an aluminum blade for aluminum and so on. So now we're gonna put that thing in the lathe and we're gonna start roughing it out. We gotta drill some holes in it, um, or drill a hole in it through it, uh, do the bores on the back side. Okay, one thing to take note of when I designed this thing or when I uh, drew it up in CAD, that I actually put the bearings up inside of it like this and the shoulder is back here and I need it to go the other way. I need the shoulder to be in here and I need the bearings to go in this way so they're trapped between this surface and this shoulder. So I guess I got lucky for the most part because everything else fits, which is I guess a good thing. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drill a hole all the way through the aluminum stock that's close to this size. Then we're going to bore this back side so these bearings fit in there. And we'll turn the part around, we'll grab it back here and we'll machine all this stuff off. And then I have an extra long piece of stock hanging out here that will cut off and then finish over here. Actually, right after I turned the camera off, I changed my mind. I think I'm going to do that backwards of the order that I initially said. So we're gonna hold on to this side of the part or this part of the stock. We're gonna do this work first and this shoulder down inside of here first, and then we'll turn it around and we'll do all of this and this stuff next. And I, you know, to be honest, I don't really think it's gonna matter. I think I got, I think it'll work either way. It's just a matter of which one's easier. Now, let's get started. I think you can see in the camera, but I've roughed out most of the groove as far as I could with carbide. Then I went over there and I ground that tool. The lighting's kind of bad over here, but hopefully you get the idea. I ground a radius tool so I can go in there and cut the radius in this thing. And hopefully that will finish up this part of it. Okay, I brought the camera over here where the lighting's a little better and took the part off the lathe since it's time to flip it for the next operation, but uh, so far it's turned out really good, so check this out. Okay, so what you're looking at, this, this piece is what I'm using to chuck up in the lathe. Um, so now I'm going to grab it by this side and turn the rest of this mess off of here. And then we'll put it in the mill and do the finish work like the slots and the bolt holes and you know these cutouts and stuff like that. So I'm I'm really pleased with how it's turning out. It's been a long time since I've had to make a remotely close to a complex part, so it's, it's turned out pretty good. I'll be all right with it. Okay, we got the lathe work done on this thing, and it actually turned out really good. Um, you can kind of get an idea. So the the angular contact bearings go there. That is the pilot for where the motor goes, and it fits in there like that. So. We don't have a whole lot left to do except for cutting this slot in there, cutting that profile, and that profile, which is, of course, is all done on the mill. So it's not going to look exactly like this because I don't have a way to do these, these contours right here. I do have a way to do uh, some of this, so that's going to turn out pretty good. Uh, well. Time to get it set up and get cutting. All right, so we've got the part uh, done on the lathe. We've got all the lathe work done to it. Now we're gonna set it up on the milling machine and we're going to um, drill the bolt pattern in one side of it and do the radius cuts on the same side of the part. Um, but first we have to sweep the part in or indicate the part. So uh, I figured that'd be probably be something cool to show you guys. So I'm going to set the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. And, um, okay. So the first thing I did is I set the stylus where it's about the same distance, uh, from the edge as I turn this thing by hand and probably kind of hard to tell from the camera perspective, but it's pretty close. Um, so 
this hole right here is just a drilled hole, the, the hole that goes all the way through the park. So we don't usually consider that to be very accurate. So what we want to do is we want to indicate the outside of this part in. So I need to change this stylus to a different kind. Okay, hopefully the camera picks that needle up. But the uh, I got the other arm on there, the other stylus on there now, and it's touching on the outside of the part. And as I hold the indicator and turn it around, you can see how far off it is. Now you can turn the machine in low gear and, and just hold this thing still and move it that way. Um, or you can just do it manually like I have here. So that's on zero. That's 20 away. 21, 22. So we'll go about halfway. And that's good. And why? Bring X over. So we're really close. It's minus one and Y. All right, so that's within a thousandth or so right there. Now my DRO is kind of the x-axis on the DRO isn't reading right now because the, the glass scale is bad and I'm waiting on a new one. But y is correct, so we'll hit that. We'll zero that. This is showing in millimeters, and we are not across the pond, so we're going to change that to inches. Okay, so zero, zero. That's good there. Okay, we got it swept in. We've moved our distance in y. To make the bolt pattern so now we're gonna go ahead and center drill four holes and then the radius cuts uh, we'll do those next So we're cutting the, the scallops in the whatever side of the part. Um, I've already done three of them, so rather than film all four, well, there's just no need. So anyways, let's cut this fourth one. You can get a chance to get a good look at it, see what it, what it looks like in, in motion, if you will. Part's done. Um, part looks really good. First time I really got to use this machine for something uh, productive besides a, a storage space. So time to get this thing flipped over and let's get the other side of it cut up. All right, so we skipped a few ops uh, in making the mount for the motor uh, for the cross slide on the lathe. Let's see if we can get out of that bright light. Okay, so anyways, it's done. Uh, got all the bolt holes done in it and let me grab this thing and show you here. It turned out uh, really nice actually. So I'll drag you over there and we can take a look at how this thing mounts up on the cross slide and then that's going to be it. Okay, there it is mounted up on the cross slide and then there's the motor. The motor goes on there like that and connects to 
the lead screw or the ball screw, which sits in here, something like this. And once it's all connected, that'll sit down inside of there. And then that'll be the end of it. So that's a, a big part of the CNC lathe conversion. Um, it's been sitting forever and I just haven't had time to get to it or get into car mode or race mode and, and everything else kind of takes a back burner. So anyways, um, that's the end of the video, guys. Uh, I know it's a little bit of change of pace for a lot of you guys. Um, for the OGs, you'll remember me talking about this stuff way back in the day. Finally time to get to it. Hopefully we can stick with it until this thing um, is complete because well, I like to make stuff. So anyways, thanks everybody for stopping by. And as usual, I certainly do appreciate it. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit the notification icon and we will see you in the next video. Thanks guys.